Butter Floss Tube, Kathy Roganella, and I'm back. I figured it's about time I give you an update of what's going on in the shop, especially since I have recently returned from the Nashville Needlework Market. I'm just giving you a, like a little brief overview here of some of the models hanging up in the shop. These back here are from Rosewood Manor. Uh, a couple of these like that one. And that one, those belong to the shop. The rest are Karen's. Um, these here are carriage house and starting and walking down there, the bags. I'll get to those eventually. And then I have some empty space down in the end. I just returned Simona's from Manny Didona. I just returned her models uh, to market. She's going to be or have her models in a couple trunk shows. So she wanted them back for a time. But I figured I would show you all this that you see right here is returned with me from the Nashville Needlework Market. There's some models hanging here, hanging and on display. I don't have all of them out, but I figured I would go through and I would take you designer by designer and show you some of the things that I picked up. I certainly didn't get it all because no one shop can buy it all. There's just, it's too much and um, would be out of everyone's budget to buy it all. But we try to do the best we can to help you guys. But I just thought I would give you a little look. Of course, there's a Primrose Cottage. So this is just a really quick walkthrough. And then once I get around the table, I'm going to stop and we'll go through designer by designer. If you see anything that catches your eye, just, you know, feel free to go ahead. These all should be up on the website. They might still be listed as pre-order. Um, Nancy's working as fast as she can to get the latest numbers updated. And then... Um, whatever I sell in the shop, I'm trying to update as well. And just little by little, we'll get it, you know, if it, we'll get that pre-order uh, comment out so that you're not wondering what is going on. So it looks a little bit better in here from the last time. Of course, there's still a couple boxes, but I have some, a trunk show from Summerhouse Stitchworks that's going to be put up for display and I think that's all for now. Yeah, those and, of course, you know, the Rosewood Manor and Carriage House, those are always on display. But, okay, let's get started. Right here, this is something new from Kelly Rivers of Old Colonial Design. She's Kelly is the daughter of Pam Reed from Old Colonial, and Kelly loves to do this little over one stuff. She loves to stitch. Over. I mean, not all of it's over one, but some is, you know, over two, but she likes this little stuff. And so these are called inch by inch. And she has a bunch of these little one, one inch by one inch designs. This one just happens to be called Daisy Dog. And it comes, um, Old Colonial's kits usually always come kitted. So you get your fabric in there. You get like, here's some interfacing that you need, the floss, and it's also on this cute little wooden paddle. And the whole kit is $15. So you can see there's your patterns in there, everything's in there. So it includes the horn book chart, linen thread, interfacing skirt text, and all the directions. So of these whole sets, now I told her she needed a bunch more, but right now she has six different designs. So she has Daisy Dog. This one is stinking adorable. Turtle Taxi. Crazy Cat. Here's Bovine Betty. Little Moo Cow. Oops, I just dropped one. Welcome Whale. Oh, maybe there's only five. Yeah, Welcome Whale. Okay, so I've been selling these. People just love them. And also... So you can see this little display tree. I hung them here just so you can get an idea. But how Kelly had them displayed is just by this little horn book. 
um, had them hanging on the little branches of this little tree. Now this little tree is also hand manufactured by Kelly's husband. He is making these trees now and you can see, I'll pick it up. It's just a small, I'll put it over here so you can get a better idea. So it's got the little wooden base and it's painted like a kind of slate greenish color with the wooden knobs. And it's a great little display tree, especially for teeny tiny little things like this. So I don't remember how much this is, but um, that should be on the website. If it's not, Nancy, I'm sure we'll get it up there. So if you're interested in this series, don't forget to display them. You can always pick up this little tree. Okay, also from Old Colonial is this called Spring Glory. This again, designed by Kelly. Sweet little bird, getting ready for spring. Okay, um, I don't know how this ended up here, but um, I'll just show you right now. Artsy Housewife, isn't that gorgeous? I love this. She has the most, I don't know, unique, beautiful little designs. I love these. She has a lot of cute ones, but these like fractor ones really appeal to me. Okay, we had a stop in Lois's room, uh, Lady Dot, and she's got a bunch of little fobs. So these are called fob for, for anything. She has little charms on here. If you can see, there's star and a crown, and there's looks like maybe uh, an eagle of some sort, or is that an octopus? I can't quite tell. Okay, so there's that. There's, she has zipper pulls. I love Paris. So you've got Eiffel Tower and a heart and a couple other things in there. Can't quite see it. Meow. Each one is a little different. So she's got like cat themed. You can see the cat head, a little heart, a bunch of little charms. You can put these, you know, on your zipper pulls for your project bags or a jacket or, you know, makeup bag, whatever you want. This is, is it, oh, Shepherd's Bush sampler bags. So it looks like there's a little lamb, a little lamb and a heart and a house. Um, another I Love Paris. This one is another Shepherd's Bush. Spooky. Okay, so she's got the spider web. You can see a bat. What's back here? I don't know, some kind of ball of some sort? I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, another shepherd's bush. Here's a woof for all you dog lovers. There's a dog and a flower. And another little heart. Another meow. So just a bunch of little assortment. I love these little do daddy things. We've sold a bunch of these things already. So she also makes these little, she calls them counting pin cloche. So what it is, is it's a beautiful um, blown glass counting pin mounted on into this little cork stopper. And it's just a beautiful little piece if you want to uh, impress your stitchy friends as you're counting to make sure that your borders meet. This is a perfect little thing. Um, these she had last year. These little, they're called Garden Fresh and they're little tomato spools. So you've got on the spool and then you've got your big wool ball pin cushion with a little felt and then a little set of little pins, decorative pins. And that's perfect to sit by your little stitchy place as you're stitching, put your, park your needle when you're, you know, counting rows or rethreading or something. Oh, here's another one of these. This one's a button cloche. And this is just the same type of thing. Instead of the long, whoops, instead of the long big counting pin, you it's filled with a bunch of little buttons. It's a sweet little thing. If if any of you guys do these secret stitcher things, you know, this is, it's not bad. It's $14. You can tuck that in your stitchy bag. Um, here's another one, another button cloche. Blue ribbon, more little buttons. You just never know when you might need a button. Now, new this year, 
um, Lois made these little miniature ones. They're called the cherry tomato. And it's a little baby spool with a little miniature tomato and some pins on the top, you can see. It's so sweet. Who wouldn't like that? But if you needed, you know, this one is 15. If you needed a cute little gift for your secret pal, your stitcher buddy, sometimes people do like Kris Kringle stitcher, secret stitchers. These are all fun little gifts. Um, also, Lois had a bunch, you know, I picked up a bunch of velveteen. So we had some different colors if you need the velveteen cauliflower. So that's in there. She also has this called um, Doctor's Flannel. Some people like to use this uh, for needle books to put inside, you know, put your, or for finishing, whichever, but you can use it. it. They're all wool. So some people like to tuck their needles in there and use this instead of like a wool felt um, in a needle book. Or you can use this as your, for your needle. She actually calls this needle pages. And this is Snow White. But I've seen it done both ways. I like the wool. Some people don't want to use regular wool. So you can use this doctor's flannel. Um, pins, all kinds of pins. We have the Solo B pin. The pin mini. And I'll show you what all these are for in just a second. We have the acorn. Um, getting back here, some just excess little frames I picked up. I had some beautiful frames, um, like patriotic silver with stars and stripes on them. I think I might have another one or two, and I'll, I'll try to locate that for the next video. Uh, let's, can, oh, so while I was here with the, I'll, I'll do it this way. So I was telling you about the pins. We have more pins down here. Um. Okay, the bees, the acorns, we have these little American flag solos. So what these are for, Kathy Haberman put out a bunch of designs released at market. Here, I'm going to try to set this up here so I don't have to hold the camera and show you. So we have gather, gather at the table, and you can see right up in here, there's the little acorn pin. So she mounts it on this little alphabet plate looks like and then tucks the ribbons the ribbons go right in boom with the little acorn pin so that's that she also has gather blessings this one is a frame design and I think is this going to be the series one of these gathers are, are going to be a series I think it's I don't know don't don't quote me on that I'm getting confused with all the different designs. Okay, here's Botanical Bee. Again, you can see the, the bee pin tucked in at the top. She makes her round ornament, and this is gorgeous. This has got to be Stephanie's fabric. Let's, whoop, I can't show you the pattern. Um, yeah, Juniper is the color by Fabrics by Stephanie. But isn't that fabulous? I love the colors on this. There is, like, a lot of bee-themed stuff this year, and I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know how they plan this out every single year but they're they always seem to hit it the same there's there was another theme too a lot of bees and when I see it I will mention oh yeah this was the other one okay so here this is I believe her yeah whole series of gathering this one starting off spring okay so you've got gather wildflowers and this is called Gather Round Spring. And you can hang them like this. You can, you know, run a string through them and hang them together. I don't, yeah, she shows it like that down here, like a whole little series, um, little display. You can do your seasonal display. And then there's going to be the other seasons too. I believe this was a retreat or where she taught a class or a retreat or something. That was... Not this one, but one of the other months, or seasons, I mean, I'm sorry. Okay, um, another gorgeous one, Liberty Pennies. Oh my gosh, I love it. I've got to stitch it. I, and I love that a lot of designers are doing this. They're adding these little extra stitches. They're not cross stitches. These are just straight stitches. It's not a big deal. But it does add such a wonderful little bit of interest. And then, of course, you've got your American flag pin pin mini 
solo pin, solo flag, whatever you want to call it. I love it, and I love this fabric she has in the background. I bet she used that for the back of this. I didn't check it when I was in her room, but I bet that's what she did. Um, and another one to her berry series. This is the Berry Basket series, and this one's called Blackberry. I believe there's a blueberry and a strawberry from previous releases. This one is very sweet. You can see the cute little blackberries. And these she just, I don't, these are not for sale. These you just get your own little um, ball, ball tipped pens there, pins, sorry. Um, the one pattern I am out of already is the folk, the spring folk. She came out with that. Maybe that was the one she taught. I, I'm, all my classes and are getting mixed up here. So I'm thinking maybe spring folk was one. So anyway, um, let's get to this. And I had paddles here. Of course, I don't have them any longer. They're like missing. They're all sold, but I can order more. And I might have, no, I think I put out everything I had. Um, so these paddles are available. Uh, we can order, shop owners can order them from Chantel. And I guess you paint them stain them, whatever you want to do, and then you mount your different designs on them. I had the paddles here, and I can get more. And the other thing that Chantel is doing are these boards. Let me set this camera back down. These little folk boards. Let's hold this up. So it's got the skinny handle. Now you can display it like this. And I think Kathy has it like this with the handle down. But I, don't quote me on that. I don't remember because I don't have the pattern anymore. Um, but I picked up some of these. So any of you doing this series, these are your little paddles for the folk. And how Kathy had them mounted on the back, she glued two big magnets. And then when she, let's say this was her finished piece, okay, then she glued two magnets to the back of this. So you've got your magnets back here. Here's your design board. You can keep it like this. You can stain it, whatever. Now you've got your fabric, you know, your linen, whatever you stitched on your, your linen or your Aida. And now it's mounted on board and you have um, two magnets there and you just, and it just, there it goes. It just sticks right to it. And then you just flip these off and on at will, change the seasons. It's super duper easy. And there you go. There you have it. Easy peasy finishing. You don't have to worry about um, framing or anything. It's just a nice, easy finish. Okay, I'm trying to eliminate glare for you. Um, okay, so these are not Chantelles, but these are super cute. These are little thread winders. So you wrap your thread around this part. These are made by Beth Twist's husband. This is made out of, they grow, they have like a forest on their property in Oregon. And these little thread winders and the other things I'm gonna show you are made from the trees on their property. So I think that's a kind of a, nice way of bringing the whole stitching thing full circle. So the stuff that you use is grown on Beth Twist property. Her husband is actually making these and doing the, um, I forgot what you call that, the etching. So we've got the little sheep. There's some butterflies here, thread winders. Um, I had some dragonflies, but those were scooped up. She also is making this little thread organizer for Home is Where Your Heart Is. And this is um, taken from one of her designs. I'll show you that. Where is Home is Where Your... Can't locate it now, but anyway. There is a design that's called Home is Where Your Heart Is. She also has now Home is Where Your Doggo Is. And they're all pretty much the same pattern. She changes up here. And she changes the wording. So instead of home is where your heart, this is home is where your dog is. This one is, oh, that's knitting needle. We'll get to that one in a minute. This is home is where your honey is. Super cute. And up here, of course, she has bees. There, she's a beekeeper also. 
Here's home is where your Beth Twist is, the beekeeper is what I mean. Um, home is where your purr ball is. She's got a cat up there, some little birds. I'm shocked the birds are flying that close to the cat. Purr ball. A couple of you ordered that already. Got more purr ball. Honey, we showed you that one. This one is called Scenic Sampler. My dear sister ordered this. She loves it. Dear old world, you are very lovely, and I'm glad to be, whoops, alive in you. And that's a nice, beautiful little willow tree, and a bee scap, and a little wishing well, and a little pond, and a sheepy, a couple sheep, and a little uh, swan. It's got it all. That's like a typical sampler. Okay. Um, this is a cute one. Uh-oh, they're sticking together. My scissors, my rules. So I think that's pretty cute. Different stork scissors, different plain. And she also, not she, her hubby, um, also made these. It's a little fob for your scissors. My scissors, my rules. I think it's adorable. Okay, one last thing from Beth Twist. She made these little um, bags, little canvas bags. It says, my scissors, my rules, and that's all it is. It's just this cream-colored canvas, off-white canvas, black candles. It's just a flat little canvas bag. It has a, if I can show you, a gusseted bottom. So, just a nice little bag. I'm trying to remember how much this is. $32 for the bag. Okay, that is that. I passed up Stacy Nash, so we're going to go back to Stacy Nash. Um, so, let's see if I can set this here. And Stacy Nash, oh my gosh, I, all her stuff. I'm already sold out of her one animal cracker. I think she came out with three animal crackers. And if you're not familiar with animal crackers, they're three-dimensional little animals that you stitch and then you put a back on them, sew a back on them, stuff them, and you just throw them in a bowl of some sort or let your cats play with them, whatever you want to do. Uh, I remember, if you guys remember from my finishing Sundays, um, Pam, one of the girls that used to come on the Sunday, uh, she made a, I think I have it around here somewhere. Yes, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to make a little detour here because I was kidding it up. I'm going to have someone stitch it for me. Not that one. Okay, so here is an old, look at my messy office area. Okay, so here is Theodore. This is an old animal crackers, not old, but older animal crackers. And Pam stitched this. And look at, he even has a cute little bag that he hangs on his shoulder. So anyway, this is, I want to say the animal is maybe, I don't know if you can see my hands maybe that big it's probably six to eight inches tall so anyway pam had it done but i don't think she was totally finished with it i think she was working on this on the little shoulder bag and her husband i don't know i guess the dog got it or something and and her husband gave it back to her and said, oh, here, you know, this is one of the dog toys or something like that. It was funny at the time. I'm not saying it correctly, but it was very funny. So anyway, Stacy had three um, new animal crackers. And number one, this is a bad angle thread lighting, but we'll do the best we can. This is called Bobbin. So it's a little mouse, and she must have a stick or something um, in the bottom and it's just sitting on the spool and it's a very sweet little mouse probably not too big so that's bobbin here's number two miss hazel little squirrel and i noticed the squirrels here in florida are much smaller than the chicago squirrels i don't know because it's hot they're leaner or what but they're cuter i think than the the ones in chicago are definitely furrier but um, these here in Florida are smaller. Okay, so that's Miss Hazel. And the one I'm missing is the one everyone went gaga for, which is Maggie Mae. And I'm sold out of her, so I can't show you. I have to reorder. But I think that was one of the show exclusives, so luckily I can reorder. Um, most shops um, that 
or not most shops, only shops that attended the market can repurchase and it doesn't go to the distributors. That's what that means, that exclusive exclusivity. It's not that no other shops can order it. It's it's exclusive to shops that attended the market for 30 days. So I need to reorder. I can reorder directly from Stacy. That's perfectly fine. And but shops that didn't go to market may not order that pattern until 30 days for market. So okay, here's another one. Le poulet pin keep her little chicken as promised. It's a little pillow. Adorable. She has all kinds of chickens. Okay, there's that. Here's tulip fields. I love this one. Tulip fields pin keep. It's a, like a little mattress. Little nest and a bunny. So pretty. Okay. I'm calling oh, another one. Another great one. Oh my gosh, I love Stacy stuff. Calling of the Sea, nice little whale, and a little ship, and a compass, um, all these cute little shells, and for an Indiana farm girl, this is awesome for, you know, for my area of the country, where we're right by the ocean, and this reminds me, um, one year when we went to Celebration, Pam, Debbie, and I, we went there, and we went to Nantucket Island. It was like a little day trip before celebration, before we had to get really cracking down and working. Uh, we went to Nantucket, took a little ferry over there, and we went to the whaling museum. And it was amazing the things that they can make from whale blubber and what they did with the oil and, you know, how the wives, they have those, um, the little, I think it's called a parapet on top of the house. And the wives would walk up there waiting for their men to come back from sea. They, they, they'd be up at the top of the house, and they would be watching for the ships in the distance for when they came back. It was just such a, an awesome little museum. And it wasn't that large, but we sure learned a lot from there. Okay, here's um, Caroline's sampler sewing bag. That's a real pretty little thing. I love that there there's all these little... Just little projects you can do. It, you know, fr stitching doesn't have to be framed and hung on a wall. I mean, look at you could just make this sweet little house with a little fence and some apples hanging off a tree and just make a little bag, put a little project bag. And this one is another one of my favorites, the Federal Sampler Sewing Bag. I love this house. I love the flowers and the urns and the birds. I love everything about it. This one looks like it's more of a not a, like a zipper, but probably it's folded. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here you can see the open when it's open. Isn't that adorable? It's not adorable. It's lovely. I love it. Okay, and here, adorable is like cute, like a little baby is adorable, but it's very lovely. Mary Robard's pocket. Again, another little one that looks like it's going to open top to bottom. Oh, maybe not. But she has stuff tucked up in there. Love it. Okay, so those are Stacy's things. One other thing that I saw, she was selling candles. I don't really burn candles. I guess I could have bought some for the shop. I was just thinking, oh, I don't do candles. But um, so she has two scents this year. She has calla lily and garden mint. But I didn't buy the candles, but I bought, she's got like lotion bars. And those of you, who know me know that I use Lolo bars and they are these uh, lotion bars kind of you know they fit in here I'll open this up they fit inside now the Lolo bar is a little bit bigger and that fits totally in there but this is the bar and it's made it's it's all 100% natural here she's got the coconut oil shea butter beeswax vitamin D and essential oils and fragrance oils and let me tell you, I'm smelling this right now. It's amazing. The calla lily and the garden mint. This one seems heavier. Yeah, maybe not. But I'll open this one too. So maybe it's a little bit bigger. So I told Stacy, I'm like, oh, Stacy, you know, because she has kind of like wavy hair. And I use my Lolo when my hair has completely air dried. 
Then I'll rub this in my hands like bar soap and get this stuff, the Lolo, on my hands. And then I'll like kind of scrunch my hair. And it kind of just protects it a little bit and keeps some of the frizz at bay, especially here in, you know, humid Florida. And so I asked Stacy, I'm like, Stacy, do you use this? You know, have you tried your new lotion bars on your hair? And she's like, what are you talking about? And I explained to her what I do. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go try it right now. <laughs> so I don't know if she did or not, but it's funny. Someone told me the, the actually the lady from Lolo when she was displaying it. Um, and I asked her about it, and she said you can use it as a like a, a deodorant. Um, I wouldn't advise that because I did use it as a deodorant for a time because I'm totally against antiperspirants. There's just too much um, known evidence, I guess. I don't know if you want to call it evidence, but it's known to cause cancer. So I stay away from antiperspirants, any kind of commercial deodorants, and I try to use something... Um, more green, earth-friendly, and safer for your skin. So the lady from Lolo told me, oh, you can use this Lolo stuff on your underarms. Use it as a deodorant. And I did, and I liked it because it leaves a nice little clean scent, and you're not, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's a antiperspirant, no, but you don't want to be clogging up your pores anyway. But um, I tried it, but it did kind of stain my... Um, my underarm, clo you know, the clothes, the ar underarms of some of my shirts. And it didn't bother all of them, but I wouldn't advise doing that. So maybe find something. Actually, who was it? There was, there's like a liquid, I know, some type of antiperspirant, or actually just a deodorant, not really an antiperspirant. But anyway, okay, this is not a show about underarms and deodorants, so... We are going to just move along here. Okay, so um, Prairie Schooler, of course. This, some of you that you're wondering what the heck was taking. I mean, I, I got all the orders out, my pre-orders. Um, but this is what held up. When I got into Hoffman's room, they were totally sold out of these, and I had to order. So I ordered when I got back home. I left Monday after market, and I think I ordered these Tuesday, and they should have been to me for sure by that weekend, if not the following Monday. Well, I don't know what was going on at FedEx. They wouldn't deliver. I have a big sign on the front of my door that says, if the store is closed, because I'm closed Monday, Tuesday. If the store is closed, you deliver it to the Benjamin Moore. I had the sign on the door. Did FedEx deliver? No, they returned it. Not to return it to um, Hoffman, but they returned it to their um, their little facility. So then it came back out the next day on Tuesday. Again, I'm closed. I must have missed him like by five minutes. And again, they sent it back to their sorting facility. I was fit to be tied. I'm like, do you know how many people are waiting for these prairie schoolers? And so I apologize for anyone who was waiting. This was the holdup because I was waiting for it to show up. So anyway, this is the 2024 Santa, so cute, with the little Scandinavian horse. I forgot there's a name for it, and I can't remember what it is. It might just be called the Scandinavian horse. I don't know, but very cute for 2024. Um, back here is, this is um, a kit from JBW. It's called an Ode to Red, and it's a sweet little kit to make this little design. It's got everything in there. It's got your backing fabric. It's got your pattern. It has floss and mounting board and, of course, probably stitching fabric. Yep, stitching fabrics in there. Everything you need to complete this. I think there's even enough floss. You can see it in there to make your uh, cording. Probably the ribbons in there, too. I wouldn't doubt it. So that's an O to red. Um, JBW stuff is probably somewhere else too. Oh, here's another one. She's got Renee's French alphabet. And I don't know if this is a complete alphabet or just these three letters. I think it's a complete. I'm going to peek inside right now. And I will let you know what it is. It is the complete alphabet. Here, I'll show you. Renee's French alphabet. So here you go. Is that not gorgeous? 
And there's the Renee, Renee Duvet. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Isn't that beautiful? This was adapted from an antique sampler. So there you go. So this is just a sampling of what you're going to get inside. Just beautiful. A lot of times people come and say, oh, do you have a, you know, a book with, you know, the alphabet? Well, here you go, guys. This is fabulous. If you want to do like a fancy wedding sampler, these would be wonderful um, letters to use. Now, um, in the back, you can see my friend Beth. She let me take her models home. Except I didn't get these because she has to finish them. But anyway, there's three. Okay, the greatest of these. This is a quote from the Bible. Um, the greatest of these is love. So faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these, which is love, but in this case, this was Beth's um, interpretation of faith. And it's a um, coverlet style. So you've got your blues and your olivey green golds, whatever you want to call it. So the other two will be released sometime, I think, soon, this year, I'm sure. But this is the first one. Love it, love it, love it. She took those back. I'm going to have them in time for celebration. So those of you that are coming to Celebration of Needlework in Nashua, New Hampshire, if you need more information about it, you can just go to celebrationofnw.com and find out more about it. It's a retail show. Um, Pam Reed of Old Colonial Designs has been running the show for over 20 years. It's a wonderful show. There's all kinds of vendors. I attend as a vendor, so I will be there, and I will have all of these uh, models from Summerhouse Stitchworks and her patterns and all that. So anyway, let's carry on here. Lucky Charm. This is really beautiful. You know, and I'm not, nothing about me says, you know, St. Patty's Day or anything, but... Um, you know, and I never celebrated. I'm not Irish, and not that you have to be. I'm from Chicago. They used to dye the river green, and there was all kinds of, like, beer drinking things going on for St. Patty's Day, but I think this is a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful little model, and you don't even have to be Irish. I mean, you can see the, the four-leaf clovers in there. You don't, you can just love it, and I love that she did the plaid. You know, I mean, very clever. And, you know, and this is the back. She just, so this is how she stuffs hers. She just sews it all four sides and then pokes a hole in the back, stuffs it, and then puts a little, joins it that way. Look at she even got little, well, these are three-leaf clovers for the backing fabric. If that can focus. So cute. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, there's that. This one, this model back here, that is this grandma's flower garden and it's a simple little design mounted on foam board with some rickrack I mean it's lovely the way she finished it just lovely okay back there um, you may have heard her talk about a sampler that she got uh, called Susan Weeks. It's a marking sampler reproduction. And then she did like a little perforated paper just with her initials. But it's something she picked up and she reproduced. Um, she had the original at market, of course. She wouldn't, you know, I don't blame her. I'm not, I'm not letting anybody take it either, the original. But this is the chart. So you can see the original back here. And then this was her adaptation. And the adaptation is that one hanging back there. Okay, that's Susan Weeks. And then last but not le least from Beth. Oh, I forgot too. She's got fragments. Fragments, fragments. The new series, 2024. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. Um, okay, so I've known Beth. Oh gosh, what year we met? 2014... I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look what year it was that we met. So anyway, I know a little bit about her. I've met her mom. I've met her sister. Um, you know, I know a little bit about the family and I met her husband. Um, so she had these on display. These are her fragments and I love the fragments and she's going to be, oh, maybe I have them. I'll show you if I unearth them, they're probably still in the box. I didn't take anything out yet except for the models that you see. 
but she's got the fragments. Um, so she's, she has like a whole history about them. And this one is called, oh, I can't show you that. Let's see how I can do this. Okay, so, no, you don't see it. But this one is called the Barner House. Now, Barner is Beth's maiden name. And this was a home that was in the family. I forgot who lived there. She told, Beth told me the whole story. I swear we talked about this whole thing for more than 30 minutes and all the different homes. This one is Pickett House. I think this was her husband's house. So what she did, so it's her 10 years in as a designer in the needlework industry. And so this was her commemorative fragments series that's coming out and it's all about her family and it's about the homes and there's a home that she was showing me that's going to be one of the upcoming releases. It might be this one back here, I think. And it's a family home and they had another little house next to it that was their summer kitchen. And they always called it, or her grandma, grandma, great grandma, called it the summer house. Well, that's how Beth got the name of her company, the summer house, summer house stitch works. So, I mean, it just fascinating to, to listen to this whole story. So I'll have the, the models to show you later, but I just really wanted to share with you guys what that was. And last from Beth is this little Victorian pin box. So this is another commemorative. She took different all her through the years this was her very first fragment set this was another i think this was part of the berlin or is this the berlin wool work i don't remember now this was another year all these were the different years to celebrate her fragments in time and so what you do is you she gives you cutting directions and you cut it out and you score it and then you make like a little little pin cube I'll try to have one on display at celebration for you guys. I probably should have one here, but I haven't done it. Um, okay, we're getting up there in time, and I don't want this to go too long. But And I have not even made it like a quarter of the way on the table. So I have a lot more to show you. One last thing I'm going to show you. But before I show you, go ahead and order. I'm leaving this weekend. I'm going to Sarasota. I'm having a retreat in... November of this year at this hotel, the Carlisle Inn in Sarasota, Florida. It's already full, so I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm going to be posting a second one, but anyway, I'm going there to check it out and to see the room and to see if I can add more people. I've kept it at 50 people, but to see, can I fit more people? Can I not? I, you know, what? what's the layout of the hotel? How does it look? But anyway, go ahead. If you have, you know, if you want to order something, go ahead and order it, and I will, you know, take care of it when I get back. Just if you have questions, I don't even know that I'm bringing my laptop. It's going to be a whirlwind. It's going to be a three-hour drive there. And then, you know, me and uh, my friend Adana, we're going to hang out and go shopping, not much shopping on Sunday in the Amish section. But in the downtown, there should be some shopping available. And then when we wake up Monday, we'll be able to shop around Sarasota in the Amish. I know they have like a a grocery store there. I don't know what else they have. It's it's the Amish vacation town. So I guess the Amish, when it's their winter time and they don't have crops to tend and animals to care for, they hop on a greyhound and they go down to Flor to Sarasota and they enjoy a little R and R. So it'll be different because I guess they all drive around on their bicycles or not drive, ride around on their bicycles and. I just, I cannot wait. I, I really miss my little clippy clappy noise. Not that I'll hear that in Sarasota because they're certainly not, the Amish are certainly not driving their buggies from Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, down to Sarasota. So like I said, they hop on a Greyhound and go down. But before we go, before I end this, this was something I found and I love it. And I think you guys will too. So I got a bunch of these. Um, they're a stitcher's tray and it's made out of, it's super heavy and it's made out of like rulers. So there's measure pins. It's got a little sewing theme to it, but there's fabric and needle and happy, create, dream, all kinds of different words. I just thought it was fun and I don't even know how much they are. 
They are 45. But like I said, it's hefty. It's got a little place in here. There's a magnet inside and it'll hold your needle there. But what a nice gift for like if you have someone you need to buy a gift for it's not you know it's not a pattern and thread I mean you know it's just something different it's beautiful it's it's a very nicely constructed well-meaning gift for your stitcher friends so anyway I will make sure this is up on the website before I close the out this video just in case someone wanted to order it so that I'm sure it's out there um for now, I think I'm going to close it. As you can see, we're about maybe halfway on the table. And actually, those nebby needles, I did not even get to those in that basket. Nor the gentle or classic color works threads, the three new threads. London Fog, Weather Vane, and Misty Mauve. So these three, you can buy them separately like this, or if you want all three, some people just want one color. If you want all three, you might as well get it. There's a little freebie pattern that goes along with it that Diane from Little House Needleworks created. So you will see that in as we get around the table. So for now, I am going to bid you adieu. Uh, we will get to the rest of this when I come back from Sarasota. And hopefully I will have pictures and can update you with those kind of things. But my floss tube friends... It was nice sharing this little bit of market with you and some of the stories and some of the things I learned. Um, it's always fun to share experiences. People ask me, you know, oh, you must be so excited to, mark to go to market. And yes, it's exciting. It's an awful lot of work. It's a, it's a ton of work to, you know, make sure you have everything and make sure, you know, you're your nerves are on edge because you're afraid you're going to forget somebody and no one wants to be forgotten. And I have one customer and I feel she's my problem child. She's not that she's the problem. I'm the problem because I screwed up on two of her items and she only ordered three. So what does that tell you? But you know, you guys are always so nice and understanding. It's I feel like, you know, almost like a mom with a new baby and you're trying to juggle the baby and the bottles and the diaper bag and, and you're trying to get out the house and get the other, the toddler off to school or it's, that's what it feels like, what you're trying to do when you go to market. So anyway, thank you for bearing with me. Thanks for um, looking at all the stuff I brought back and I'm excited to show you more as we work our way around the table. So... It is Saturday evening, March 16th. It's about a week and a half after market, and I have a lot more to show you, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back at you. But in the meantime, may your needle be inspired. Bye now.